Welcome to part four of this demonstration of the Orchard Content Management System. In this segment, we show how to trigger actions based on events that are configured with rules. We will then show how to go beyond pages and blogs by demonstrating how to create a custom content type. It's time now to demonstrate eventing. Our case study to illustrate this will be the desire to have a notification be received anytime a visitor to our site leaves a comment. To get started, we'll go to the dashboard, we'll go to modules, and we'll go fetch a couple more extensions that we'll need. We'll start with one that is a base module for eventing called messaging, and we'll install this. We'll accept the installation and the feature activation. Then on top of this module, we'll add one more. I'll go back and type messaging again. And that will give us the email messaging module, which I will likewise install. I will accept the feature activations, which leaves us with a list of features that have been enabled along with a yellow message indicating that with this module we now have email settings that we need to arrange to make certain that we can actually send emails. Having installed this module there is now a new email sub option underneath settings on the dashboard. We'll select this and fill in settings suitable to send email uh, from a Gmail account. and save. We see above it says settings updated. Now we should proceed to the rules option on the dashboard to see if we're ready to go and creating our notification event. We'll choose to add a new rule and we'll call it comments notification. From here we'll go and add our first event. And we see that there are no events that we can add. This may mean that we did not install the right module or modules, but a first place to check before looking for the absence of a module is to see if all rules have been appropriately enabled. Here I see amongst the enabled and disabled rules that the contents rules have not been enabled, and I see that uh, the comments rules have not been enabled. I'll just go ahead and enable both of these and then we'll return back to our rule to see if we can edit it and add in an event. Okay, we see now we have some events available to us. We'll go ahead and take content created and see if we can hook into comments. I'll say comment here, I'll say save, and with a comment that is being created we need to add an action. So I'll take a look at the options here. I think the first and the last actions in this list are kind of interesting. To be able to close comments uh, on a particular event suggests that if too many comments are coming in too quickly you can shut down the the commenting system in case you're being spammed. Uh, likewise there is a delayed action that you can take uh, to postpone certain uh, activities. But for our purposes let's go ahead and do the send email action from here I can choose who will receive the email based on those users I've already defined. The site owner is fine for this purpose. Now let's zoom in a little closer onto the page. The subject will be a new comment and another feature associated with these events are tokens. If you see the little box on the right here there is an option that can be selected which brings up tokens that you can inject into the email that will be expanded into uh, appropriate values. In this case I'm interested perhaps in the content author of that of that uh, comment. So I will take this, hit the escape key to close this tokens window, and paste that into my subject line. For the body I can do the same. 
where perhaps now I'm interested in having a link to edit the, the ability to edit the content. I will again close this tokens panel, but I want to point something out. If you accidentally click somewhere else on the website, for example, suppose you were to click right here and I hit escape, this little tokens pop-up will not disappear. If I move and click back onto the tokens panel here, hit escape, I can make it go away. Uh, I'll put in edit the comment here and I'll hit save. From here I could add more events or add more actions. If I have multiple events and actions, it means that if any one of the events executes, that means all of the actions associated with this rule will execute. To make this rule complete, I have two save options. Rather than enable now, I'll just simply hit save so that we can see that to enable the rule separately, I can do that from the rules dashboard command. I can simply select enable seeing that the icon shows that it is currently not enabled. Now having this send an email to the site owner will not be of much use if the site owner has no email or has an incorrect email. Right now the admin has an email that targets Darth Vader which probably isn't going to work for us so I'll go ahead and put in my email and hopefully we'll have some better luck. So let's give our new rule a chance to execute. We'll go to our blog. We'll select the title, which will bring us to the details screen, which has the comments window. And we'll leave a comment. With that submitted, let's take a look at an annotated screenshot of the email that was sent and I received. Reading these arrow annotations, top to bottom and left to right, we start with seeing that the token we specified for the author of the comment did get expanded to the admin name as we were admin when we left the comment. The second arrow we see that this email was received in the access code account specified associated with admin. For the third arrow we see that the email came from the Gmail account we specified for the SMTP settings from which the site would be sending its emails. And the fourth arrow, we see that the link that allows us to edit the comment and visit the comment is a, a relative path. It does not include the domain name. This suggests that if we want this to actually be selectable in the future, we would have to change this so that we explicitly type in our domain name before the token. Otherwise, overall, the point is made that this is how the event system works. And as we install new modules, new events and new actions become available to us. Now we move on to our next topic, which is a creation of custom content types. In this segment, we will reproduce an example found in the Online Orchard project documentation, which fits well in this Jumpstart tutorial. Specifically, we'll have the goal of creating a book review widget that we can place into our sidebar. Let's get started. Part of the reason of giving this particular demonstration is to show that Orchard is an extensibility platform that can be used for more than just creating web pages or blog posts. Having selected the content command from the dashboard, we'll select the content types tab. From here, we'll create a new type and we'll call it a book review. It gives a unique name for it and we accept. Knowing that a content type consists of content parts, we'll select the parts that we want our book review to have. We certainly want to have a body where we can leave some thoughts about the book we're reviewing. We would like it to be containable because we're going to put each of our book reviews into a list. In order for it to be within a list, it has to be containable. We'll allow it to have a route so we can visit it directly if someone selects our book review. And we'll select tags. For now, we'll save this and see if this is sufficient for our purposes. With our parts in place, I'd like to also demonstrate the notion of fields, so I'll add a couple fields. We'll talk about price, which we'll add, and we'll also add a rating. With our content type now reasonably well defined, we'll save it. We see that a book review has been created. 
And if we revisit our content area and look under content types, we should see that there is now, in fact, a book review content type that we have made. It's giving us the option to create a new book review, and we'll go ahead and do that right now. Our first book will be Design Patterns, a classic, and we'll say that it's a great book. I had said previously that our book review will be part of a list, but we haven't created the list yet, so we are not in a position to add it to a list. Here are the fields that we specified. We'll say that it's $40 or $50, and that we'll give it a 9.5 rating in stars. Its tags will be its technology. If we were to publish now, we would not see this book review anywhere on our site as there is nothing that links to it. We could create an explicit link based on the slug we have at the top and put it into an HTML widget or into a blog post. But for now, we'll just go ahead and save what we have and go create a link, I'm sorry, a list, and put this book review into the list. We'll give this the plural name book reviews. The slug is made we want it to contain the book review type. The only reason why we see the book review type available in this dropdown is precisely because we gave it the containable content part, which we spoke of earlier. We'll select how we want our book reviews to be sorted, which I will select routable title based on the uh, title and slug given to each of the book reviews. For now, we'll go ahead and say we want to see this on the main menu as book reviews and we'll save. We can see that our newly created list does not have any book reviews in it, inclusive of the design patterns book review we made. To add that book review we had made, we choose items, we select design patterns with the option move to book reviews, and we apply. Let's now go see what that did for us. We now have a new menu option called book reviews. If we select it, we find it is actually empty. This is because the one book review it contains we had only saved. We didn't actually publish it. So to find how we can take care of that, our content command again from the dashboard, we see book reviews listed as one of the content items, and we'll look at the contained items with it, within it. Here design patterns had never been published, so I'll select publish. I'll go back to the site and look at book reviews now design patterns is available. Now we can demonstrate our final goal by moving our book review into a widget in the sidebar. To do this we go to widgets, we select our sidebar area and say add, we choose a container widget which can hold a list, and we'll give it the title of book reviews. You can see it's asking what it's going to contain. We've only made one list called book reviews, so it has that already selected. And we see that there is a maximum of five items that will appear in that list. We can sort it by the date created or the writable title as we did before. In this case, we'll go ahead and say uh, date created descending. We could filter out certain items in this book review list, but we'll leave it as is and we'll hit save. We return to the site and we should see that our book review is indeed now a widget in the sidebar. Remember too that if we wish to change anything of the appearance of or the sequence of the items inside this book review, we can use the shape tracer as we've done in previous segments to change the placement files and rearrange the order of these custom fields and the content parts. If we'd like to adjust the parameters of this list in the widget area, we can just select the edit button on book reviews and we're back to our options. This concludes the fourth and final part of this presentation, in which we have introduced both custom types and Orchard's rule-based event system. I hope this series has accelerated your journey into Orchard CMS.